Greetings fellow film fans, thanks for tuning in. My name is Mercy and this is the Funny Pajamas YouTube channel. It's Mandalorian Friday once again and I know it's about Saturday when I'm uploading this but Mandalorian Friday has arrived and we have been graced with more wonderful Star Wars goodness. So this is a spoiler depth discussion of the latest episode titled The Tragedy and uh, since it's spoiler heavy, if you haven't seen this episode as yet, go check it out, save this video for later and don't forget to come back and watch this video where we can discuss. Okay, so the, the episode kicks off straight away with Mando landing on the planet Tython. He places Grogu, or as we lovingly know him as Baby Yoda, on the seeing stone on top of the mount just as he was instructed by Ahsoka Tano. Now, as things progress, suddenly he he's interrupted and and they get straight into the meat of it in this episode and we see a ship landing and that ship is Slave One. So we know Boba Fett is going to make an appearance. And I totally hyped to see Boba Fett. I did not expect Boba Fett to make another appearance. He did make a slight, they did tease him and they showed him a bit at the end of, of the first episode of this season. But I did not expect him to make another appearance. And Boba Fett steps out of the ship and he comes forward and talks to Mando. Now Mando is standoffish against Boba Fett and Boba Fett is actually looking for his armor. Which as we saw in episode 1, that is the marshal of this season, Boba Fett acquired from Cobb Vanth on Tatooine when he helped him and his town fight against the Great Dragon. So he is now, Mando is in possession of Boba Fett's armor and Boba Fett is looking to retrieve it from him. So they start negotiating and Boba Fett says, see, I'm going to, he lays it out flat. He says, I want my armor. If you don't, I'll have my associate uh, attack. And we see that his associate is actually Fennec Shand. Now Fennec Shand is the ex-Imperial sharpshooter turned assassin that, um, that Mando helps you know, almost helps capture in the in the previous season. And we find out that he leaves her for dead in the wilderness. He thinks she's dead. But we do see at the end a tease of uh, of some feet walking by. And once we saw episode one of the season, most people were quick to assume. And of course, the assumption was true that it would be Boba Fett. So Boba Fett uh, saved Fennec Shand. And, uh, and he equipped her with cybernetic parks that helped her live. So now she finds herself indebted to Boba Fett and she teams up with him and she's helping him. And Boba Fett says, I've got a sh my sharpshooter and he she'll shoot the child if you do not hand me my armor. And just as things are progressing, they are interrupted by an Imperial trooper carrier. And we get a whole lot of stormtroopers coming out and they swarm the place. And this episode was especially action heavy. And you could see the director who in this case was Robert Rodriguez's classic signature and fingerprints all over the place. Now this was the shortest episode we've had so far of this season. It, it, ha it went just over 30 minutes, I believe, 31 minutes or so, I believe. And it was, it was over so fast and I was like, oh man, it's over already. And I was like, I really wanted to see more and they just left us hanging there. Anyway, we'll come back to that. So the stormtroopers storm out and they start attacking. And uh, Fennec Shan and Boba Fett and uh, Mando all team up and they start fighting against. Now Mando at this point tries to retrieve Grogu from the seeing stone. But Grogu is deep in meditation. He's, all, he's in some sort of a trance. And this activates a force field sort of thing around him. He's tapped into the force and he's probably sending out his signal and connecting to whatever Jedi. But while he's doing this, he's surrounded by a force field which Mando is not able to penetrate. So he heads back and helps Fennec Shan and Boba Fett. Now, while the fighting goes on, it's amazing action sequence. The, this, I believe, was the most action heavy um, episode and they went really brutal and all out. It was really gritty. It was really very, you know, visceral action scenes and Boba Fett, man, he was a real badass in this. I mean, you realize why, you know, so many people are scared of him and Boba Fett at the moment, he does not have his armor with him. He makes use of a Tuscan Raider spear and he's just 
brutally killing you know hitting stormtroopers right left you can see their helmets shattering and you know it's this is one of the most brutal episodes of mandalorian i was pretty surprised now we see some you know boba fett manages to retrieve his uh, mandalorian armor from the razor crest and then he is if you thought he was brutal without his armor he's absolutely deadly with it and they manage to shake off the stormtroopers and just as the stormtroopers are up, are escaping boba fett fires his missile and he destroys them now just as this is happening moff gideon is up in his airship and he's he's he sends out the order to send the dark troopers now we were teased with the dark troopers at the end of the episode title the siege that was i believe episode 4 and we see the dark troopers in that the dark troopers are deployed and and i was shocked that they actually went ahead and did this moff gideon he destroy he orders a missile to be fired and they destroy the razor crest that was a gutsy move i did not expect them to do that because i mean normal obviously you're thinking they've already started the merchandising toys for the toys and the models of the razor crest now that was a gutsy move destroying the razor crest right now at this point and uh, before mando is able to get to grogu the dark troopers land and they they take baby yoda and they fly back off to moff gideon now Boba Fett and uh, Mando and Fennec Shan are left back, and um, since Boba Fett's got his armor back, however, he had made a deal with Mando that in exchange for the armor, he would ensure the child's safety. But the baby was taken away, so now he's like they all three of them team up, and Mando sort of sifts through the wreckage of the Razor Crest. I felt really bad. This episode is aptly titled "The Tragedy," and. <laughs> I felt that this was more of a tragedy because the Razor Crest was destroyed rather than Baby Yoda getting kidnapped. But anyway, I digress. Now Mando is able to somehow scavenge the Beskar spear that he received in the previous episode, and we know Beskar is able is resistant to lightsabers. So I think this is going to come in a uh, very it's going to be crucial further ahead because i i am pretty sure that mando and moff gideon are going to face off and i'm sure the spear is going to come into play because we know moff gideon is in possession of the dark saber now along with the spear mando also finds a tiny little metal ball that uh, baby yoda keeps consistently swiping away from him and we see in the first in the, in the big opening shots how mando and baby yoda connect and we kind of feel, it's it's like heart wrenching that oh man mando is going to have to give up baby yoda and i don't know how they're going to proceed because i know the show cannot move forward without baby yoda i'm pretty sure they can't move forward anyway uh now um boba fett and fennec shan and mando they team up together because boba fett says see uh, i said that i would help you i mean if you gave me my armor back i would help ensure the safety of the child that's a deal that they had formed and baby yoda was taken so they team up and they head off towards navarro where mando meets up with kara dune now kara dune has gone legit she's become a legitimate marshal for the new republic and uh, mando seeks her help and asks her for information regarding uh, the character played by bill burr i believe the actor's name and uh, the character he played was mayfeld and he came in the previous season where they have a uh, where they try to break out another prisoner and eventually bilbo's character that is mayfield gets captured again and they actually they try to double cross mando you go ahead watch the previous uh, season and you will definitely know so mando seeking information on this guy and kara dune is like she's hesitant because she's gone totally legit now but when mando says that the child was taken she gives in and gives him the information so i'm pretty sure the next episode is going to be uh, a team up episode where they're going to break out mayfield from prison and they are seeking his help to help track moff gideon's ship so that they can retrieve and rescue baby yoda I have a feeling that the next episode will be like a prison bust out episode, prison break episode, where they'll bust out Mayfield. And I think the last episode, whoever the Jedi is that Baby Yoda made contact with, I think is going to make an appearance there. I'm pretty sure they're going to. And I and my guess on that, like I said in the previous episode, I think it most probably will be Ezra Bridger, 
could be Mace Windu, maybe very small likelihood of Luke Skywalker. But there you have it. And I think the final episode is going to be like a team up where they all go and rescue baby Yoda. And I'm looking forward to this. I am so hyped for the new episode. I like this episode. This was not my favorite episode. That crown is still worn by the previous episode. But this is definitely up there. So far, they've been killing it with this series and I'm enjoying this season. I, I really enjoyed this season more than the previous season. They're building up on the foundation. And I felt that this was one of the first episodes where they stray from the usual path of the, the usual structure that they follow. And uh, I really enjoyed it. What did you think of it? Did you like it as much as I did? Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And listen, while you're here, why don't you hit some that beautiful red but subscribe button down below. Become a subscriber to my channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time I post something new. Don't forget to hit the like button because it really helps me out. And uh, that's about it. You can contact me on Twitter at Mercy underscore D. On Instagram at Mercy underscore SD. Also, you can uh, contact me on the Funny Pajamas Facebook page. Simply at Funny Pajamas. Uh, I have... Funny Pajamas has a standalone website that is www.funny-pajamas.com. That's pajamas with a Y. And uh, I always put up uh, some reviews and some mishmash of, a whole, of entertainment and movie related news. So be sure to check it out. You can also contact me by email simply at mercy at funny-pajamas.com. Pajamas, once again, with a Y. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. That's all I have for you right now. Uh, as I would like to end by saying, may the force be with you because, of course, this is the way. See you next week with more Mandalorian goodness. This is Mercy, signing out. Bye.